industry inside a nutshell. The show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. So, Britannic patroness of the Mediterranean, the animation. So, what's happening now is um, everyone, the nurses, the doctors, um, they're all up on in the in the dining room and they're currently having breakfast because it's very early in the morning. Um, it is quite warm. It's usually pretty warm, even even in November time. Um, it's pretty warm in November in the in the Aegean Sea. So some of the wards have been aired. This you got to imagine this is before uh, ventilation and you know AC and all that sort of thing. So um, aircon. So to what to 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 do the um to air the wards for the patients that were that was going to be taken on at uh, Lemnos is they're going to be opening the portholes and then the nurses and doctors are, the the doctors had ordered the nurses to open the portholes yeah sadly this has happened yes um a mine had been laid by u73 in october 1916 Switched your and sorry we've got adverts <laughs> oh no <laughs> dang it that's what we were getting started i know <laughs> <laughs> and um so Can so leave that in there <laughs> as yeah we'll edit that out uh right. so basically um so what's happened is the the miners struck on the low lowest part of the bow between holds two and three and um not everyone i mean the nurses and doctors thought it was they'd hit a barge or something they'd ran into uh maybe another ship um, Ada Garland mentions this when she came up uh, late for her breakfast early in the morning and because uh, she'd had a lie in, sort of. <laughs> and she came in and just as she was about to start on her stewed uh, pears, um, she noticed a, 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 a kind of a thud, kind of a, 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 a violent, um, as she put it, implosion, but we know it was an explosion. But I'm, I'm guessing it's probably where where she was stood at the time in the dining room, it probably did feel like an implosion. And um, now the crew below the de below decks are, are aware of what's happened because there's now an enforce of water coming in through the hull of the vessel. But only four of her compartments had been compromised by the mine itself. Um, they had been blown straight through. Uh, the bulkheads are completely damaged and it's gone right from uh, boiler room, uh, say say six right to um the four peak tank so there's four so there's there's four compartments that have been compromised which is just above the capability of britannic to stay afloat so captain bartlett who um was just about to take a bath that morning was dressed in his pajamas and he came racing onto the bridge and um straight away got into his his went into action and he ordered um, the officers to um, get a damage report. Uh, so, um, and he's, the crew to go down and see what, the, what, what, it, what has happened basically. And um, you see, you could imagine Bartlett wasn't a ship designer. Um, unlike on Titanic, you know, Captain, Bar uh, Cap uh, Captain Smith had the, um, the luxury of having Thomas Andrews on board the vessel and he designed the vessel. So he kind of knew um, as as he was doing his reports, what was really happening to the Titanic. So it, they, they, the, the Captain Smith could have got, could, was able to get a, um, a realistic um, review of what was going on with, with the vessel. Whereas Bartlett didn't, he didn't have that. So he was only getting reports from the crew what was going on below decks and there was reports of flooding coming through to through to captain bartlett um but what had happened as well is that the mine was so violent that the vibration um had warped the vessel and also obviously the 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 the, the collision with the mine um warped the vessel um and and unfortunately one of the bulkhead doors uh, between uh, the uh, the fireman's tunnel and 
boiler room six was well, that that company that was failed that failed to close because it was open uh, in its full open position. And I have spoken about this in my previous um, um, talks about Britannic. And um, basically, Britannic um, was designed to uh, withstand uh, up to six compartments flooded completely, and she would be able to stay afloat. Um, but unfortunately, what was happening is, is that because the, the, the bulkhead door had failed to close, uh, water was able to gain access through that. And also the fireman's tunnel had been damaged, so water was able to flow through that too. Um, and then also um, a, a door between boiler room six and five had also failed to close. Now, there is no real understanding or any evidence to why that didn't close. Uh, we don't believe it was anything to do with the warping of the vessel uh, or, or the steel itself. It, it may have been forced open by the crew. And one of the things, um, th there's three ways these these doors could be closed, was through manually. So there was a crank that you would cl uh, close the doors from the deck above, say e deck. Um, or they would be afloat underneath the floor plates. And if when water came in through the hull of the vessel, the float would rise and then the door, it would trigger a catch on the door and the door would close. Uh, or they could be, uh, some of them, not all of them, but some of them could be electronically closed from the bridge itself. Um, sadly, for some, obviously we know that at least two of these doors had been compromised. Now, why were these doors open? And I'm going to tell you why. Is because it was early in the morning and there's a change of staff between the firemen and the, and the trimmers and the, the boilermen, the stokers. And um, to gain e easy access, now bearing in mind this is um, um, breaking all war regulations, um, they had, they opened, they, the doors were wide open to allow access, easy access to the designated areas. So these doors were wide open when the mine struck, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, uh, DK, do you want to add anything? Yeah, and for those that don't know, yes, I actually do have a histobrick model of the HMHS Britannic, and from the explosion that all of you saw, you possibly saw the cables fell down. Those are the Marconi cables, and if I could scoop back a little bit right here, they're the cables that run from the foremast to the aft mast and runs right down into the Marconi room, just like what we saw on the uh, uh, Titanic or the Lusitania during the sinking. However, when the mine detonation happened, that these cables snapped and fell. So that means, and of course we got an ad. No, I don't want three for two paints. No. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, when these cables snapped, it basically uh, renders the them here in any response from any nearby ships useless. So that means they could be able to transmit, but receiving them yeah that's a problem right there so they're basically talking blindly but can't hear the responses mm. yeah that that's basically correct yeah they they um yeah they they basically the cables had been snapped and and uh there was a connection lost to the silent room um so they were able to send out a distress call but they weren't able to receive a re uh, a reply back uh, what's happening now is um, a doctor had uh, come. Well, a doctor had raced in uh, and said, "Oh, you know, we've hit something. You know, uh, please, please get your life jackets on." To the nurses that were in the um, in the dining room, so they're now um, getting their life jackets on and, and making their way up to the boat deck. Um, the best, I mean, what amazes me is um, how Britannic was designed, where the Alan Elevators themselves were designed to be able to get passengers right up to the boat deck, whereas Titanic, the, ele the elevators are only the, they only went up as far as A deck, but on Britannic they went up as B as far as uh, the boat deck, and also there was an extra um, uh, lift uh, elevator that was added onto the A deck uh, promenade, uh, which went as far as the third class room. So even the third class. Have the option of being able to get um, an elevator up 
at least as far as the a deck promenade which in my my view which is a very clever design, clever thing to 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 be placed in the vessel um but also um so yeah so the distress calls are being sent the lifeboats are now being um uncovered and swung out although Sorry. captain bartlett has not given the order to abandon ship um he is trying to make his way up uh, make his way to the island of Kia, which is just off the starboard bow of Britannic. Um, now, he... So, as you can say, see that an annoying alarm is going on, oh, I'm afraid. Uh, that was also uh, an added design, on a safety design onto the Britannic so that everybody was able to hear a an alarm uh, for any danger to to happen to happen to the vessel, so that they were aware that the the ship was in trouble. Just like um, what ships have today, though. Exactly. Yeah, they they have them today, but they also have um, uh, deck plans to show them um, all the way up to the the boat deck. Um, now, Bartlett is having some trouble as well because the the explosion has also caused. Um, the cables to the um, the the telegraphs to the engine rooms to be to be either snapped snapped or uh, compromised in some way, and he's not able to use the uh, normal telegraphs to signal uh, to signal the signals to or um, commands to the engine room. The other thing that's happened is uh, the rudder has also failed, and it's failed to to so the he's not able to push to Britannic or steer Britannic in the way in in the direction towards Kia. And uh, the problem is is that with this, he's having to use the engines on the starboard on the port bat on the port stern to be able to push the ship towards Kia. Um, so as you can see. Some crew at the stern has already abandoned ship. Now, this is before Captain Bartlett's any co uh, command to abandon the vessel, and they were, and it was, mm -hmm. and it, they was ordered to stay around the ship in case there was any swimmers in the water. Um, so they got away safely. They got away okay, but they got away without Captain um, Bartlett's orders to abandon the vessel. So, any anything you want to add, DK? That's going on right now. Yep, right now they are actually trying to uh, get the pro port propeller moving. Right now, they actually did stop the starboard once. So, what they're trying to do is they're trying to manually steer it with the use of the propellers, so that way they can be able to be able to beach it at the island of Kia. Now, later on, that's actually called force flooding. What they're actually doing is, as long as the ship is moving, that intake of water. Well, we're Pretend my hand is the water line right here. And what that's going to do, all that water, all that added pressure will basically just feed into the ship itself, adding more and more pressure to it. That's right. Um, the, the, in a way, Brita uh, Captain Bartlett is causing more harm than good. I mean, you can understand he's trying to save his ship. You can see here, it's just, it's in arm's reach of, it, it's in arm's reach and, He's trying to save his vessel and all the people that are on on the ship, and that's the captain's job. The captain's job is to protect life, to save life, um, and that if that means trying to save the whole vessel, then it's to try and save the whole vessel. Um, I'm sure um, William Turner, Captain William Turner, did exactly the same with Lusitania. He probably tried to save his ship by trying to beach his ship because he was only 11 miles away from. Uh, the island of um, uh, the um, old head of King Sail. So, uh, you know, you, there's this, uh, it's, that's what a captain's job is to do. It's not only to um, to uh, protect life, uh, uh, not only to, to command the vessel and to, to navigate the vessel, but it's also to protect life that's on board. That's the, that's the job of the captain, and that's what he's trying to do. As you can see, Britannic is... is now considerably considerably down by the head um she's in the same position um uh, or the same condition that it took titanic within uh, an hour uh, this is this is the britannic's got a really gaping hole in her and she's she's now and she's noticeably down by the head because um violet jessup uh who we all know 
uh, Violet Jessop um, mentions that uh, in her voice recording with uh, uh, John Graham Maxton, um, he she says, um, he asked her, did you know the ship was going down? He says, well, yes, I didn't notice she was, I mean, she was a big ship, but she, you could tell that she was down by the head. You tell she was she was she was in trouble. Um, Violet um, on board uh, right now. She's she at the time of the explosion. She was in the in the pantry and she was taking care of this nurse who had who was suffering with uh, seasickness. Um, and she was and she as she puts it, she was completely useless. And um, pause there. Yeah, and another ad. Yeah. And uh, so, and, so uh, and she, she, as she puts it, she's in the pantry getting her pat of butter, as she puts it. And um, she's now having to get this nurse dressed and, uh, you know, looking very presentable because she's got to climb down into a lifeboat. And, you know, a lady wearing a dress um, or pyjamas is not very presentable. So um, it's it's now she's trying to get this nurse in you know safely into a boat um but also trying to save her own life but uh violet uh, who had previously survived the the titanic sinking um she <laughs> she made a mistake she put her life jacket and she was wearing this coat because as she put it she wanted to look nice even though she was only getting dressed to her or, or going to see her brother william uh, she wanted to look nice, even though it was a brother. And she took her an engagement ring and and a prayer book, and she she was wearing this coat. And she put the the life jacket over uh, over a coat, and you know instead of the other way around. And um, she said that if she'd seen a passenger do this, she'd have screamed murder at them. She would have been very unhappy with them, and um, she, and she would have made it very clear. So. Um, a few other interesting characters that are on board the Britannic right now is uh, Arthur John Priest, who also survived the, the Titanic disaster. He's a stoker on board, but he's also on board the Britannic with his brother. Um, so now we're going to about we're about to see the incident with one of the lifeboats. So Violet's in this lifeboat. She's in lifeboat number four, and for some reason the lifeboat got launched without the captain's permission and the ship's now moving along um, and the propeller's still moving uh, the, the vessel and it's turning and it's now on water uh, surface level. Bearing in mind, this is a 16 foot propeller. So you can imagine this is a big propeller coming at you. Um, if, you ever, if you ever want to know what the, what the size of those propellers look like, actually bring up a photo of what the uh, RMS Olympics propeller propellers actually look like in comparison to the workmen that were yeah. underneath it that gives you that perspective perspective of what it looks like well yes but britannic actually had the largest propellers on the olympic class so her propellers were a lot larger than the olympic and titanics um so you could put that into comparison but think about it as double the size um so Violet's now had, she's got her back to the boat and she does not quite know what's going on, but she sees all these people jumping into the water. And uh, suddenly then she realizes there's a propeller coming at them. Now she has two choices. She gets uh, caught by the propeller with the boat or she jumps. Problem is Violet doesn't know how to swim. So she jumps and then this happens. <laughs> Yep, yeah, that happens, and not that only pro and that propeller is nothing but a grinder when it comes to lifeboats. Exactly, and many people saw this happen. One person that saw it happen was a a boy a boy scout called uh, George um, Pierman. George Pierman saw this. He was dangling from a, a lifeboat davit, and he had seen the boat being cut up and all the and all the people being cut up with it. And, it, and he also suffered with PTSD later on in life. Bearing in mind, he was only 15, maybe 15 years old. So he was a very yep. young boy. And he and he, and he he suffered. In, in his, his family said that in later life, that it may have actually caused his um, growth to, um, you know, to stop. Um, and uh, it, it 
was pro- was a real problem for him. But he but he had to, when he lowered himself into the water, he burnt his hands with the rope, um, a uh, rope burn, and uh, but he survived and um, and he was completely fine. But as you can see now, the the Britannic is uh, is is in trouble. She's in serious trouble, and from the look at it, look of it, she's not going to last much longer. Um, and she's not quite going to make it there to Kier, is she? Um, nope. No. Uh, so the other thing that's happening is now uh, she's now the water is now reaching up to Edek. The problem is now the water the, now the water tech compartments that hadn't been compromised um, are now being compromised through the scuttles or as as we call them portholes in the side of the vessel that had been left open by the nurses that had been ordered to open them by the doctors. And now the water is now becoming on uh, E-deck level and the water is now go- uh, going to start flooding these compartments that haven't quite been um, quite, quite, quite been compromised. And she probably would have lasted longer if it wasn't for these portholes. But trope, I'm trope. gonna uh, now. Here we go. Is going to be another lifeboat. Lifeboat number two. Lifeboat number two is now going to be um, heading towards the propeller. And this is what happens when you let fear take over your mind. So what yes. these crew members did was they basically let the fear take over them instead of obeying orders. Mm. It's like, yeah, we gotta get off the ship now. This lifeboat right here miraculously whoever was lowering it completely stopped now however when they were stopped the occupants up in the boat you know started yelling at the crew man you know cussing them out and all that and they they care they watch this boat in horror the one that we're in right now get sucked up the very same way and chopped into bits yeah it's like a blender uh, it is like a blender and the occupants of that boat are so grateful that the crew members stopped lowering and British Airways. And another one! I know. <laughs> ah! Piano! I want to learn piano so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I did start learning. Um. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so now it's it's becoming really... Compromise. I mean, it's becoming a real problem now. But it's it's it, one of the people that were in that lifeboat that just that's just been cut off. Lifeboat number two was a guy called Archie Jewell, who was Titanic one of Titanic's six lookouts, and he survived the Titanic and he went and served on the Britannic as as an able seaman. And uh, Arthur uh, Archie was in that lifeboat, and he and he actually talks about. He wrote a letter to his sister how, you know, he he was being uh, turned up by the propeller, and he was about ready to say goodbye to the world. But you know, Archie Archie was also had an amazing story because uh, when it came to the Britannic, is because he was actually a deck above from where the explosion took place, so he actually witnessed. The explosion, but he survived it, which is miraculous. And and he said how it, the the blind it like after the mine, uh, there was this cloud of um, powder in the air, and it almost blinded him. And um, he was he someone had rushed through a door and it smacked him in the eye, and he had to, he had to be bandaged up. And he he said it was like being pan- bandaged up, he, as he put it, old like old Nelson. That's how he put it. He made a joke yeah, oh, out of yeah. it. And there goes one of the uh, poor gantry davits as it broke down, which is basically a mechanical problem. And whatever lifeboats in that one are now considered useless. Yeah, so that's so... if you ever look at the wreck today and see those, see where they are at now. And of course, I was in the shadow. And of course, it's still positioned like this to this mm-hmm. very day as it lays on its side. Yes. Um, it's almost like a, 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 a moment in time. like It's like time has stopped. For Britannic, um, so what's happening now is Captain Bartlett is getting some serious um, flooding reports back, and he's now stopped the vessel. He's completely stopped the vessel, and he's now gave the order to abandon the vessel. Um, and as you can see now, is that the lifeboats are now 
rapidly being launched. Um, thank goodness for these gantry davits because these gantry davits have been given a real bad name, or the 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 people who don't like them, they don't like the look of them, uh, because they look out of out of place for a ship that was designed for the passenger trade. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, because of the Titanic disaster, and we believe that Edward Wilding had his hand in the design of Britannic and the safety features that were placed on the Britannic, and this could have been his design. Um, and um, but the Gantry Davits worked. You know, the, 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 the White Star Line were not there to outlook the, the the competition. They were there to make sure that people got off the Britannic completely safe. And as you can see, it's comp it's working like like clockwork. It's 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 working, and um, they were able to get the lifeboats and the people off that they were able to get off. And um, you know, as we know, sadly, but those those lifeboats that were launched, and I will remind people that those lifeboats that were launched pr uh, prematurely were not launched by the Gantry Davits. They were launched launched by the Welling Davits. So I hear. You know, so you can't blame the 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 gantry davits for them for that for that incident. Um, so yeah, so as you can see there, there's a there's a lifeboat and it looks very funny. It's it's almost it's 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 a it's what they call the motor launch and it's it's not what you normally see on a on an ocean liner, but they had them on Britannic and and thank goodness they did because those motor launches were able to be um were able to sail through motor um and they also had the uh luxury of having wireless on board those lifeboats so they were able to send messages from those lifeboats so they were unheard of uh on a ship like britannic uh, no other ship had had them before um mm. so you know britannic was really cutting edge for her time she really was Anything you want to add here, DK? Yeah, usually you can see uh, motor launches on uh, modern-day battleships and aircraft carriers now these yeah. days, but you will never see them on an ocean liner, perhaps. No, not in the, not in the early 20th century, no. Um, so realistically, Britannic paved the way for what we have nowadays. So, And also the electronically way of launching a lifeboat. So... You know, Britannic was almost the grandmother to what we have today. Uh, so it's 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 amazing. It's we have to appreciate the 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 effort that they made in making sure that everyone got off this vessel in case of uh, a, a sinking or any other grounding or incident that may take place on a vessel. Uh, you know, when you board a ship, it's 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 you you know, especially in the early twentieth century, as we know, plenty of ships did sink, especially in world in the World War, in the First World War, so and the Second World War. Um, you know, it, you you took your 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 life, um, in the balance of Mother Nature, what may happen, and these things do happen, and they have done, um, as we know. With with Titanic uh, with Britannic sister Titanic, um. So yeah, so as we and one of the 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 one of the survivors uh, who's getting off the ship right now on the on the starboard side is uh, a lady called Ada Garland, um, who I spoke about before, who was just about ready to eat her stewed pears before the mine struck, um, and uh, she's now getting off in lifeboat seventeen, and. Uh, her lifeboat is suspended quite for some time in the air because um, the plug in the lifeboat hadn't quite been put in. Um, so they had to find that. And, and of course, another ad. Ooh, and Loki another season one. two. Yes. <laughs> uh, so they had to try and find that device um, to make sure that the lifeboat didn't fill up with water while it was in the, the ocean because that wouldn't have been any good, would it? DK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on about that Loki season two. Let's do this. Yep. So we're back. And yeah, so as we were saying, um, so <laughs> so the captain the captain stopped the vessel. So he's now abandoning abandoning the vessel. As we said, that Ada Garland has um abandoned the vessel in lifeboat 17. 
Um, any anything do you want to add at this point, DK? What's going on right now? Let's see. Yeah, but we're about to uh get those engines back going and try it one more time to uh get the ship to the island of Kia. But Captain Barlow's gotta order those engines to not order the engines, uh order lifeboats to stop lowering. So I think this one coming off of the uh, one of the gantry davits is basically going to be the last one before he fires up the engines once again. Yeah, it will be the one of the last ones. Um so yeah, uh... But he, he will get a report soon, Captain Bartlett. He will get a report soon that the flooding has slowed down uh, from what he has been told. Um, again, it's it's probably not going to be a re realistic ass uh, an assessment of what really is going on. I mean, depends how, how far down the crew member can get that did report that the flooding had slowed down. Um, maybe where he was, the flooding seemed to be slower. Um, but as we know, as he starts to move the vessel again, it's it's not slow at all. Um, I think, you know, Captain Bartlett, he, he was a, an experienced mariner. He'd had several, several, several years in, in with the White Star Line and, and as a, as an officer um, sailing these these oceans. And, you know, he wasn't new to the, he wasn't new. And, uh, you know, only back in, in January 1912, he was uh, appointed as superintendent of the White Star Line. So, you know, he, uh, for the Belfast um, side of things. So, you know, so he was uh, very experienced. And um, before he took command of Britannic, he was actually in charge of a armed yacht called the uh, the HM... We got another advert here. Uh, American Express, really? The yes, yeah, so the HMY uh, Verona. Um, there we go. Which then, which then he had uh, been appointed uh, command of her, and then um, he was transferred from that vessel over to the Britannic. Now, Bartlett wasn't the first, um, the first choice for Britannic for the command of Britannic. Uh, he um, was practically the second choice because it was uh, they wanted. White Star wanted um, uh, Captain Haddock in charge of Britannic, but uh, uh, Captain Haddock was um, training uh, men on uh, dummy battleships in Belfast, and they would not remove him from his post uh, to put him in command of Britannic. So they didn't. So the Admiralty denied his appointment to the Britannic, and so Bartlett was uh, put in command of the vessel. Um, so, but Bartlett knew the Britannic right from when she was um, very early on in her construction. So he had seen Britannic from from birth to death. So he had a, 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 a I suppose, a, a, a an affection for the Britannic, a, a, um, and a, a connection with it. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I think Captain Bartlett at this point is suffering with. Um, I believe he must have been suffering with tunnel vision. Because um, you know he's getting all these reports backwards and forth that the, the you know the flooding and everything and the rap and how rapidly the flooding is coming into the vessel, the water is coming into the vessel. But I think because he can see um, Kia Island and she's so you know the island is so close, I think he's 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 probably you know um, not quite realizing the 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 seriousness of the situation. You know how quickly the Britannic is sinking. Anything you want to add at this point, DK, before you know? A little bit of congested throat there. If you actually notice that not all the lifeboats were actually used on board, even though that the Britannic is equipped with enough enough lifeboats for actually everyone on board, even the two that were actually destroyed by the port propeller as well. So basically, Britannic was, you got enough lifeboats, but you got enough time. For Lusitania's mm. case... You got enough lifeboats, but not enough time. And yeah. for Titanic, you don't have enough lifeboats, but you yet yeah, you still had enough time. Yeah, um, that's that's basically it. I mean, it was a to totally different situation because you know people that died on on Britannic were in a lifeboat, the very thing that was supposed to get the, them off the vessel safely. Uh, whereas on Titanic and Lusitania, people died because they weren't in a lifeboat. Um, 
and you know it's 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 really really um interesting how these um these different scenarios do happen so as you can see he's only using the emergency telegraph and now he's now he's getting the report that the uh the flooding has slowed down on the vessel so now he's going to try and uh, make a uh an, another attempt a final attempt at trying to reach um to beach uh, at i at, at Kia island um to shallow the vessel so that she doesn't sink um but as we can see uh the water is now rapidly coming towards the for the for the forecastle the forecastle deck of the vessel uh which is the lowest part well the lowest part on the bow uh the lowest deck on the bow um so um well, the lowest open deck, shall I say, on the bow. Opening. That's right. Um, so uh, he's, he's, but the thing is, you can see that now Britannic is very, really, she's starting to run sluggishly. She's starting to, you got to think that the Britannic now is not facing the surface anymore. The bow is now facing the, you know, down. It is going, it's going into the ocean. So, um so basically, the bow will only go, the ship will only go in the direction that it's pointing at. And unfortunately, at this rate, at this rate now, Britannic is facing the seabed. She's going towards towards the seabed. Um, so Captain Bartlett is now all practically dragging the vessel into the ocean even more uh, by um, trying to move his vessel. Um, the whole the whole idea is to bet. It, I think Britannic. Would have lasted a lot longer if he hadn't moved the vessel the way he did, but you know he was trying to be a good captain. He was trying to do what he what he was trained to do, and that was to try and um, try and save the vessel. Um, anything you want to add, uh, DK? And this goes right back to the uh, forced flooding. Goes back to the forced flooding. Bartlett's actually putting more pressure inside the water as we can see that the list to starboard is getting greater and greater by the by the minute because you gotta remember the Britannic does have a double skin, you got one exterior and one exterior. And that was actually implemented it had long before the Titanic disaster even happened. And it wasn't there just for, oh, this is we're gonna put this in after Titanic. After the Titanic disaster, we're actually going to put this in as another safety precaution, just like the gantry davits. Yeah, I mean, um, exactly. I mean, uh, he's he, he, he's just he's just trying to be, trying to do what he was what he was trained to do. Uh, but um, you know, as like DK said, he is forcing more water into the hull, which is now dragging the ship even further into the ocean. Um, so yeah, it's 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 tragic. It really is sad uh, what's happening right now, and um, I'm sure now that the the people on board that are are very aware of, and not only people that are on board, but also people in the lifeboats are now very aware that their ship is not going to survive the the, the morning that she is that she is going down. Um, the thing is as well. I mean. The ship is now taking on so much water that the the water now that the the um the the ship is now um very heavy. She's very top heavy. So um moving the ship is 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 a very um trying time to the vessel because she's 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 more than double her own weight. Um, and uh, so it's like it's it, how I can put it. It's like having um, driving your car with four flat tires, just running on their rims. That's how. That's how um, sluggishly she's she's uh, moving and steering. I mean, at this point, she's probably over uh, moving only around three degrees at a time uh, towards the starboard side. Um, but he's just got the the most lack the lack of control over this vessel is unbelievable. And to be honest, it's it's only testament to Bartlett's efforts. That he was able to push Britannic in the direction um, of Kia, uh, even in the first place. So it just goes to show how desperate the attempt was. But unfortunately, Britannic will overshoot Kia, and 
he will try, try and push the Britannic back towards, um, towards Kia. Uh, as you, you you'll see in a moment that he does try to attempt this because somehow or for some reason the rudder does kind of respond to a command. Um, I don't know why it didn't before. I, I believe that maybe the the steering gear was was knocked out by the you know by the vibration from the explosion. I think maybe some of the crew may have been in the um, you know in in the uh, rudder room um, to try and uh, try and probably solve the issue. Um, and that's probably why Britannic probably kind of responded slightly to a, to a, to respond because maybe the crew were trying to uh were trying to to sort the the rudder issue out uh maybe captain bartlett knew about the rudder issue uh but this is why he was using the engines on the the port side and also the 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 middle end the um the middle uh, propeller as well the um the turbine engine too um but you know as you can see you know, uh, whatever his attempt is to try and reach Kira is not quite working. I mean, Britannic will actually, um, from the point of explosion, and when she contact, what came in, into contact with the mine to where she finally did sink, she did a hundred and eighty turn. Um, but his attempt to try and push Britannic back towards Kia, because Britannic is so heavy now and she's so down by the bow, it's it's just. It's just a fail. It's just not gonna. It's not gonna work. And um, basically, at this point, Britannic is doomed to founder. So, um, an interesting uh, boy. Called, I mean, we did a recent video about the Boy Scouts, and one interesting uh, boy. We don't know when he actually abandoned the vessel, but a guy called um, Mackenzie. Um, he um, he tried to. Uh, well, he was in charge of blowing, um, blowing the whistle, and uh, uh, you know, and 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 also another uh, Boy Scout on board the vessel right now is Edward Island, who uh, was sort of helping the captain. He was sort of almost like the captain's um, servant, and he was uh, helping the captain to um, send messages to the crew from the captain because captain's too busy; he can't. You know, keep leaving the the bridge to send signals or messages to the crew. He he, he has to be on the bridge, uh, so he sends Island off to do that, and he he tells Island to abandon the vessel. But wow. Island tells he he disobeys. At first, he disobeys Bartlett's command uh, to abandon the vessel, um, but in the end, um, he did in in the end did abandon the vessel. We don't know which lifeboat he got off, but we know that he was. Ordered to collect um, the uh, papers, the ship's papers, such as the uh, maybe the logbook and things like that, and then get mm -hmm. them in a lifeboat. And he did obey. He did obey the o obey the captain's orders to abandon the vessel. Anything you want to add, uh, DK? We're about up to the final throws. This thing, as we see, the water is going up over the forward well deck. I think it's. Basically, almost time to abandon ship for real. Yeah, I mean, as we can see that um, the time. Yeah, the 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 fo the forecastle now is uh, and the well deck is now submerging, and this tells us now, and it should tell the captain that the ship hasn't got much longer. But you know, Captain Bartlett again tried his tried to, and he's still moving the ship while this is happening as well. I mean. I'm surprised he didn't stop the vessel any earlier than this because from the bridge he should he would have been able to see this actually uh, you know this this um event happening um but for some reason he, he does you know try and uh, carry on trying to beach or shallow the vessel um you know uh, I don't know why he didn't stop the vessel any earlier but who knows and you know I suppose it's it's testament to his, his his attempt to save as many lives as he could, and the the ship isn't quite abandoned yet. There's still people on on board the vessel. Basically, the uh, the engineer engineer workers back here, yeah, are still inside as well because they got to be ordered to stop the engines. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they they have they've got to, they they are 
practically the one of the last people to leave the vessel. Um, there's a few crew, other crew that are on board at the moment, trying to, or some of the IMCs and that are trying to throw um, things into the water, like life rafts and things like that, to try and, um, you know, for any swimmers that are in the water, that may be in the water, that uh, that uh, may be left by the ship. Uh, a port, the port, um, uh, the port motor launch actually had um, Violet Jessup on board, and Violet um, really tells a horrific story about how when she was picked up or was was came up to the lifeboat that she was she was trying to help this uh, young lad. Uh, I, I suppose he was a young soldier who had lost his arm due to the the you know him being cut up by the um, the propeller and. Um, the officer or the person that was on the on the lifeboat wouldn't allow them onto the boat. He, they, he said women first, uh, so Violet was allowed on the boat. But uh, this young officer, Violet, said she saw him drown. She saw him disappear below the water because of his arm. He couldn't swim, so he just drowned. And um, she said, "If I had a gun, I'd have shot him." The officer on board. Oof. Yeah. Um, and I'm, Not me I'm heard guessing, about that one before. Yeah, that's what Violet says, and I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing this may have been Colonel Anderson that she was talking about because Colonel Anderson was on that boat. Um, so, uh, you know, she was very unhappy with the way, um, you know, this officer handled things um, and behaved. Uh, she she was very displeased. Um, Sheila Macbeth, she's a she's a fun she's a fun character and a fun survivor because you know she tells a, a, a very spectacular and very funny not funny but very amusing story where um I I'll go into it after the Britannic sinks but um she she tells an interesting story but she she is very uh, because she um when when the Britannic wreck was discovered she was able to go down. Because uh, Cousteau, uh, Jack, Jack Cousteau, um, who found the wreck, uh, invited her along to dive the ship, uh, the shipwreck. And she went down in a submarine. Bear in mind, she's 86 at this point. So this is 60 years after the, the Britannic sank. And um, she was able to, to to dive the shipwreck. And she wasn't interested in the shipwreck. She was she was said it was just a dead thing. And, you know, she made a few comments. But yeah, she's currently the, the the oldest woman or the oldest person to die of a shipwreck. Um, eighty six years old, and she she tells a very interesting but harrowing story. And she also tells that there's an there's actually a um uh, a recording, a voice recording of her on the channel. Please take a take a look. I mean, Shaw uh, says we'll put it down in the um in the comments or in or in the. I will leave it in the card above, but thanks for asking me. There we go. That's a lot better. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot better. I like that. Yeah, I'm not you. I'm not a YouTube. I don't talk YouTube, so thanks. Thanks, Seth. (laughs) No worries. Always happy to talk to the YouTube. Thank you, as well as Mr. Britannic. Thank you. (laughs) Um. So yeah. Uh. It's so. Like I say, she tells a very interesting but harrowing story. How, you know, life aboard the vessel and. And storms that she would come into con, you know, that she would be involved in while she was on the Britannic, and how displeased she was because of how uncomfortable it would be. But, um, but she didn't. She did talk about how roomly her cabin was, and you know, she's a, she's a very fun, interesting character to to listen to. So please take a take a listen to her. Now, as you can see. Yeah, the now the bow is completely starting it's to gone. submerge. Yeah, uh, she's she's going, and now Captain Bartlett is now blowing the whistle for the last few uh, the the last whistles to abandon the vessel. This is to to signal to the remaining crew, such as the engineers, to that time is over, time is done, it, it's finished. She's going down. She's she's this is it. Um, abandon the vessel. And the engineers, they abandon the vessel, but they they go through uh, Scotland Road and then they go up into the um, fourth funnel, and they uh, run into the they go they escape through the escape hatch in four in the fourth funnel, 
and then they jump from sea deck from from the the stern um and they will they will be picked up later on um so yeah this is this is sadly the end of britannic is coming to the end so you know dk is there anything you want to add while this is taking place all, all we're doing we're just uh watching the end of the sinking now don't get us wrong and, and take that context yes it was a very tragic event but you gotta think about it mostly everyone survived this the only ones that did die were of course from the propeller and of course mm -hmm. that one uh soldier that had his uh that does not have his uh, arm who yeah. uh, drowned so don't don't take it out of context and uh, and all that and a 15 year old boy also was killed in the in the in the propellers uh so what's happening now is captain bartlett to the remaining crew are now going towards the starboard side of the vessel and they will uh walk uh, the remaining bridge crew, shall I say, are going to start walking into the water as the ship sinks beneath them from the starboard gantry. Um, and Bartlett will swim away from the vessel as the ship sinks. Uh, another uh, crew member, a quartermaster, had gone down earlier on in the sinking to fetch bread for the lifeboats. And as he came up, back up from the pantry, the ship was rolling over and the bridge had now submerged and he dropped the bread and chucked himself. He threw himself in the ocean. He threw himself overboard. We can laugh about it because he survived, but you know, yeah. at that point he just said, Oh no, it's going down. Yep. I'm out of here. Yep. Um, I, mean, I would say the same thing too. Yeah. It's, it's, I, cer I certainly would too. Yes. Need more info on the Britannic Baker. Hmm. Oh, so by the way, that was me think, messaging on Discord. <laughs> I think we just gave. Three. I think we just gave says a video idea. You sure <laughs> yeah, did. did. You sure did. Um, and of course, and of course, one by one, bottles are going to start falling down. Yeah, I thought I'd just come on a little bit in the end, really, just because I've been talking a little bit. But yeah, the funnels are going down and she's going down by the head. Um, mind you, a little bit quicker than Titanic, but it, she's really going down. Yeah, she is. Um... And then we've got oh, the cable there snapping as well. There goes now. one of them now. Ada Garland uh, rec recollects, or at least uh, not just uh, Ada Garland, but a lot of survivors um, saw the funnels fall and, and how they said it is they were like matchsticks falling into the ocean. Uh, that's how they, they described the scene. And uh, Violet Jessup said that she saw the Britannic founder and she said that um, that all the, all the machinery fell into the ocean like toys. And she said that, that with a great roar, the Britannic disappeared beneath the waves. And as you can see there, she is kind of like lying on a very, very weird angle. I, I can't really pronounce what the other words to say, but it's kind of like a not a very straight um angle like the titanic when she sank but just a little bit bent over to the starboard side i believe yeah that's good yeah, it's like she's, it's like starboard like, over. like this is just slowly rolling over it's not yeah. like titanic where it just goes down by the head you know list to one side and then back again and then go down and even keel and of course titanic's and that's, case, it was never like this yeah, but it could have been it could have been but luckily it wasn't I must stress that that was nothing to do with um, the. There was no uh, gantry debit on the port side. That was just due because this type of class of ship tends to roll over onto them onto their sides. Um, if you look at Lusitania, she rolled over onto her starboard side. The Andrea Doria. There's plenty yeah. of ships in history. At the sides of Britannic has rolled over. It's just what they do. It's just the way they behave. For some reason, Titanic started to roll but then as the 
boat deck was becoming flood it started to flood it kind of corrected itself um and then she went down practically straight but with but you know there's plenty of history history in ships where that they have tend to roll over onto the sides that they are damaged on and um this is what happened to britannic in britannic is no different in a few moments right now we should see that the uh, britannic is actually at a near vertical angle like this like this because the bow will hit the bottom and yeah remember this is only a 882 foot long ship same mm. for titanic and of course, the main sister ship of his class, the RMS Olympic. And the Mediterranean is about less than the depth of the Britannic. So once it hit that bottom, the bow right here just completely snapped off. Yeah. And it, and right now, it'll just start, start settling back down. There we go. And just like I said, right there. Yeah, um, so as DK says, she, she sank in 400 feet of water, so the ship was 882 foot long. So while the bow was on the sea floor, the stern quite wasn't quite yet. She was on the, on the surface. So to bring that bow down, uh, to bring the stern down, uh, pardon me, was that uh, the, the ship had such a, a structural failure that it just crumbled under its own weight. And then to get that stern down, there was this fracture that had to happen or did happen. And it and the bow did tear off to a certain extent. Yep, and there, and there, there goes there the goes... rest of the, the hull itself right there, just yeah. starting to sell back down. And then there should um, disappear for a while. At, at 9.07 a.m. On, on November 21st, 1916, the HMHS Britannic sinks. The waters claim the HMHS Britannic. Yeah. And that's where she will lie till she's discovered 60 years later by Jack Cousteau. And interesting enough, if you were to dive to the wreck today, you would actually see one of the funnels actually did came off. After it slammed into the uh, the bed. Yep. Um. Let me just get rid of that a moment. So after the Britannic sank, um, Sheila Macbeth said that uh, she was in a she was in the boat and um, they went through the wreckage and um, she one of the crew actually picked out a a, a um a piece of a chair that had, that had come away from one of the chair. It was just the back of the chair. And that chair still exists to this day, and it's, and um, it does belong, and it's in the uh, Mitchell family. The, the Mitchell family do own that piece of um, chair that came from the wreckage of Britannic. Yeah, that is um, incredible. Absolutely incredible. incredible. Fact. Yeah, and while she was while she was in the boat, she was actually in the boat with the matron, uh, uh, Annie Dales, and. Um, one of the one of the uh, RAMC, one of the officers, uh, made a joke because on the on the on the ship during the voyage, uh, the 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 matron had put these boards across where women, the nurses and doctors were not allowed to mix, and same with the soldiers. So she put these boards where you know they couldn't mix, and they one of these boards, they they saw one of these boards floating on the water, and um, one of the men said, oh. You know, I'm surprised the Great Dane didn't put on the on on the ship that doctors and nurses should drown on different sides of the vessel. And but and Sheila said that she wanted to laugh, but she didn't couldn't laugh because the matron was quite close to her, so she didn't want to get um, a, a slap round the head or something from the from the the matron. Um, so I I I had to tell that story because I always find that story amusing. But Violet Jessup, bless her, she um. She, she basically yeah. when her, her, her brother made a joke about her surviving another shipwreck. She, he said, "If you, if you, if sis, if you find you survive another shipwreck, please put your toothbrush in your pocket because when she left Titanic, everything went down with it. So she couldn't, she didn't have anything. So her brother made a joke out of it, and um, she remembered to put the toothbrush in her pocket. And the, after 
after the ship had sank and they were on um on the on the dock of Pyrus in the hotel, um, the matron came knocking on the door. Bearing in mind, Violet had been had a huge gash on her head because you know, lucky enough, she survived, but you know, through the skin of her own teeth. And, lucky that um, bun was there too. Exactly, and the matron instead of she came knocking on the door. Now, Violet had been violently sick the whole de- the whole time because she had inhaled a lot of the cork insulation from Britannic while she was in the water and so she was violently sick and she said it was dreadful this the taste of it was dreadful but the the matron came knocking on the door and she said instead of asking how she was how jessup was she said where did you get that toothbrush from just abruptly just said where did you get that toothbrush from and you know by that see this is this this these amazing stories or these true life stories um are the things that bring stories like Britannic to life because it is the the souls, the humans that, you know, the ship is amazing and it's a beautiful thing, but it's the souls that are on board that basically brings the story all around as, you know, it, it's all, it's all intertwined, isn't it? It's what makes a story and um, these different stories and, you know, just recently, we did get some testimony, didn't we, from survivors? And just reading them is is just incredible because you are seeing it through their own eyes, and it's wow. You know, I mean, it says you, you please add something. <laughs> yeah, because normally I'm a bit yeah. quiet, though. Yeah. Like, I was going to yeah. say, with all like, the experiences, really, especially on a day like today, because it is the anniversary of the Britannic sinking, it's mm. one important thing to remember that every survivor is remembered for a reason, whether they survived or tragically died. They yeah. always have to remember um, yeah. what that's important. And this is a good opportunity for me to say that <laughs> even though Britannic does get a mention a lot in the community guess where she doesn't isn't even mentioned boys do you know belfast not titanic yes. belfast yes yeah. she's not Hall. mentioned <laughs> she's not mentioned in the titanic belfast museum so what i've done is that i got a group together along with my friends on discord and we all came together to create a petition to encourage the maritime belfast trust to get a plaque for the olympic and the britannic especially for the services during the first mm. world war and we need to reach our targets as much as we can so we're trying to get a thousand signatures as much as we can so so if you want to sign and share the petition, I will leave a link in the description box down below and in the card above if YouTube likes me for that. But yeah, <laughs> if you can, please share, please, please tell the story and let Britannic's story be remembered. Yes, and just a, an important fact or a, an important, a point is that it doesn't matter how many people die in a disaster. The fact is people did die. That's what matters. And they should be remembered. It doesn't matter if it's Britannic, Titanic, or any any disaster. If people did die in a disaster, then they should be remembered. That's the point. It's not how many. It's that it's the fact that people did die in this disaster, and exactly. that's how it should be. Yeah, it's not a competition. It's not that old Titanic had fourteen hundred people, all the, over fourteen hundred people that drowned or died or froze to death or went down with the vessel or Lusitania, there was nearly 1,200 people. It's not the amount, it's not the quantity, it's about that lives were lost. And these people were were people that had families. You know, there were people's brothers, uncles, aunts, or whatever. It's, it's the fact that these people that did die never came home again. And bearing in mind, Britannic sank almost near Christmas. So these people never returned home for Christmas with their families. So let's just remember that. And it's not the quantity, it's the fact that souls were lost. That's yeah. how I want to leave mm-hmm. it. Yeah, definitely agree. And we're going to wrap this video up in a second because I know that we could go on about it, but <laughs> no, I think yeah. we definitely need a different video for a more could. different amazing story. So to yes. summon up the video throughout the whole of it, boys, I got a question. How do you think Britannic should be remembered? 
I think I just said how oh, oh, she just should that. remember. I think, <laughs> I think also I think also Britannic was cut down in a, on a job that was um was was meant a, to be a mission of mercy. She was a hospital ship. She was supposed to bring the sick and wounded back home to be uh, healed. And when she sank, she, that mercy was lost. That that um, way home was lost for those soldiers, um, because the ship was now on the sea floor. And I think she should remem- be remembered for who she was and what she was doing and the important role that she was playing in the First World War, and that she was cut down in that in that role too. And bearing in mind, Britannic never took one paying passenger that she was designed to do, not one paying passenger because she was she sank before she could. So that's how I think she should be remembered. And also the 30 lives that were lost in the sinking. Yeah. As long as we keep talking about the ship and remember it for who she is, she'll definitely deserve the recognition that she equally deserves. We all know Titanic did got some big time recognition, but yet the Britannic is always that one Olympian that nobody talks about. Like I saw on Discord last night, somebody actually posted a photo of a surviving artifact from the uh, Britannic because it was supposed to be a passenger her ship. And guess where it's located at? What? It's uh, it's south of me, down in Florida, at the Titanic artifact exhibit. Wow! Okay. Wow! So you need to go. You need to go. And... I think I think I found a new reason why I should go down there. You should. Yeah, yeah. do it. Do it now. Yes. Do a video <laughs> on it. Do a video on it. Oh, yeah. I oh I definitely will. Please do. Time to make my <laughs> time to make my immense meet and just take I a mean, road trip. I mean, I agree, but Britannic recently has been getting a lot of attention, which is great. I'm glad that she's getting into the public eye. And just recently, there's been an, an interior dive two times, not just one. There's been there's been a, a second dive this year. One was back in 2021. And people are really excited about the mysteries uh, being un- uncovered, uh, solved by these interior dives. So thank goodness for the Greek government for allowing them to do this. So thank you, guys. And, and hopefully in future, we may see some artifacts being raised from the wreck. So... I'm glad that Britannic is getting some some kind of recognition and some sort of um, interest that she hasn't been getting in, say, the last um, century, since, well, a few centuries that she'd been lost. So. Yeah. Right. And Definitely. it turns out we got less than a minute as well. Yeah, yeah so we're going to probably wrap up here quick. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. And see you real soon. Bye. See you guys. Bye. See you guys. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, departing from the dogs. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.